Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back with a, another portfolio update. We do these every Sunday morning. Before we get into the video, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch, comment, and like the videos. And a special thank you to those who subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. And for those of you who may be stopping by for the first time, on this channel we focus on dividend growth investing, buying stocks in good companies that pay growing dividends and hold them for the long term. It's not rocket science. In my opinion, the best way to do anything, keep it as simple as possible. So it really boils down to consistently investing, dollar cost averaging, whether that's weekly, monthly, quarterly, once a year when you get your taxes back, whatever your, uh, your guidelines are, into growing companies with positive cash flow that covers the dividend with a high return on their invested capital. I cover all my investments into the portfolio every Sunday morning, 7.30. That's what this is. We did add... $1,935 in new capital to the portfolio. It is free to see what I'm doing, but if you would like to help the channel, take some time and hit that thumbs up down below if you find any value in the content. Hit the subscribe button, join us on this journey to financial freedom. Hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new videos. Drop a comment, if I didn't mention that down below, let me know what you think of the video. What did you add to your portfolio this week? Any dividends you were paid out? Uh, any companies, maybe you sold. Uh, a lot of companies have really run up. I know some people are starting to take some profits. So let me know if sometimes you do that in your portfolio. I do that at times. I also sell some positions that are no longer performing or meeting the criteria that I want from time to time. So let me know if you've done any of that. If a position is underperforming, it is all right, in my opinion, to cut it out and to reallocate those funds elsewhere. I will cover that as well. Uh, so let's jump into the video. We're going to start off with options and see what we were into in options this week. And first up on March 11th, just a small one. This is not the only one. And typically I don't even jump into the options this small, uh, only received $4.45, uh, a sold a cash secured put here, sold the open on the 11th for Bank of America. We've been running a wheel on Bank of America for a while now. Uh, so we have some cash. It's still that same $33.50. Uh, Bank of America has run up into the $35, $34 range. So we're kind of waiting for it to pull back. And I put another one in for Nutrien. I put one in for Pfizer. Uh, what was another one? I think I put one in for even Realty Income this week. None of those hit. Uh, so typically, like I said, I wouldn't do one this, uh, this small, but I was trying to run this with a several others. So I figured what the heck. Uh, $4.45, a whopping for, I don't even think this would get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. I'm not a, a Starbucks uh, patron, so if you are, let me know. Would this even buy me a cup of coffee at Starbucks? But we put this right back into the portfolio. And again, cash secured put, one contract. The contract is 100 shares. BAC is the ticker, Bank of America. Had an expiration date of March 15th, which would have been Friday. It did expire worthless. I think it closed out at $35 and some change. So $33.50 was the strike price. Uh, we received five cents, right, in options premium, which amounts to four dollars and forty-five cents after the fees. So let's keep rolling here. So not a lot in options this week. Let me know if you had any options plays this week and how they panned out. Hopefully, better than four dollars and forty-five cents, but it is what it is. Now, the first dividends of the weeks uh, came in on March twelfth. All right, we received. 1.43745 shares bought by the $144.78 paid by Lindo Basil Industries, ticker LYB. This is out of the material sector. And we do have the drip set on this portfolio. On my portfolio, I cannot set individual positions to drip. I would like to be able to do that. I hope that uh, Allied Bank, that's the bank that I use, does that in the future. But right now, it's all or nothing. So all the positions in my portfolio are set to drip. DRIP stands for Dividend Reinvestment Plan, and that just means that any time a position pays out dividends, in this instant line to Basel, the $144.78, it goes right back in and buys more shares of that company. And these new shares, the 1.43745 shares, added an additional $7.18 in passive income. And you'll hear the term dividend snowball from time to time. That is the dividend snowball in effect, right? So we own shares of Lionel Basil. They were already in the portfolio. Those shares paid out dividends. Those dividends go back and buy more shares. Those shares provide additional passive income. That is the dividend snowball growing over time. And that will continue to happen. Even if I don't add any new capital into this position, each time Lionel Basil pays out dividends, which they pay out quarterly, they'll buy more shares. Right now it's a little over you know, one share, not quite one and a half shares. So I'll get at least four or five, maybe six shares of Lionel Basil as this pays out the year. Now, if they pull back enough, I may add a little bit to this position, but right now they're just not in my range and I'm adding to other positions. So let's keep going here. So that's March 12th. 
On March 15th, we received a big chunk of dividends here, $139.72. And it came from a Realty Income and Next Era Energy. And first up, a Realty Income, ticker O. This is a monthly paying REIT, paid as $54.79. Went right back in and picked up just over one share, 1.05782. So almost two, well, some some months I don't get quite one share, but right now it's really pulled back. Uh, you see here it got it in the $51 range. Uh, so nice to see there that I'm picking up one share. That means if it stays low like this, I would get at least 12 shares of Realty Income. This is one I'm adding to. With it being around $52, $51, I think I actually bought a couple more shares this week. We'll see when we look at the new purchases. Uh, but these shares were at $51.79. Uh, dividends paid out from Next Era Energy, ticker NEE. This is out of the utility sector, paid as $84.93. Those funds went right back in and picked up 1.43058 more shares of Next Era Energy. And these new shares added an additional $6.19 in passive income. So good week overall in dividends. $144 we saw from Lion to Basil, plus the $139 from uh, O and Next Era Energy. You know, anytime I get two, almost $300 in dividends, that's really nice to see. That would pay, you know, a utility bill, I think my gas or my water bill, definitely uh, an insurance bill for sure. If I was to take the drip off, I could start paying some bills with these dividends now, which is really, really the you know objective of the portfolio to eventually live off of that. So really, when I see these dividends come in with the drip set, I still think in the back of my mind, OK, what could I pay with this if I was to take the drip off? Right. Uh, definitely be able to take my wife and kids out for a nice meal on Friday, but more on the other end, I look at, okay, what bills would I be able to pay with this? And that is the idea. Eventually, I will turn off the drip, I will live off the dividends, and it will pay for my lifestyle, all the bills that I have at that time. Now we're into the new capital added to the portfolio. We added $962.84 on March 11th. We picked up, we've been buying BABA for a while. We continue to do so. We just went over 100 shares. We'll see that here in a little bit. We added eight more shares of Alibaba Group, ticker BABA. -A. This is it. Uh, it is the Chinese, I'll call it the Chinese Amazon, right? They are a company out of uh, China that provides uh, online uh, services. Uh, that you can buy products from just like Amazon, right? So this is their version of Amazon. I think it's very cheap right now. I've been buying it anything under 76, around 76 or lower. So we picked up those shares at $75.52. We added three more shares of the newest position we added to the portfolio here this month. American Waterworks, ticker, ticker AWK. This is out of the utility sector. Uh, picked up those shares at $119.56. And I think actually by the end of the, the week, this was down to 118 or 117. We'll see that whenever we look at the overall portfolio here at the end. Uh, so these shares, the eight shares of BABA and the three more shares of American Waterworks added $16.49 in additional capital income in additional income over the next year. And we weren't quite done on March 15th. On Friday, we added another $972.83. With those funds, we picked up 10 more shares of Valet, ticker V-A-L-E. This is a mining company out of Brazil, out of the material sector. We picked up those shares at $11.92. Now, this is one I have not been adding to in a long time, but anytime this drops back under $12, I like to add to this one. So we may continue to nibble on this one, You know, maybe even go at 10 five to 10 shares of tranche here uh, and try to build out this position a little bit. I really like this mining company. They provide a lot of the metals uh, for the EV. It's kind of an EV play, sneaky EV play, right? Providing the materials for the batteries, uh, as well as some other critical infrastructure. You know, their steel, uh, their nickel, those are uh, metals that we use in building construction and boats, ships, rail, you name it. So they provide a, a lot of critical materials for infrastructure as well as, like I said, a sneaky play around the EV uh, production that's probably going to be going on for the next 10 years plus. We did add two more shares of Realty Income, right? We picked up two more, ticker O, $51.69, again, out of the real estate sector here. So I really like Realty Income, where it's at right now. I'm going to continue to nibble. You know, I'm not dropping a lot on it, but a couple shares a week probably. Uh, so long as it stays under my cost basis, I think my cost basis is down to 57 or $58 now. We'll see that here in a little bit. Two more shares of Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO, out of the information technology sector, picked up those shares at $48.96. Another one that's slipped back under my cost basis here. So probably going to nibble there as long as it's under my cost basis. 
Comcast, another one I'm trying to build out, similar to American Waterworks. Again, I'm probably going to back off BABA now, maybe one or two shares or something a week uh, for the rest of the month. But Comcast and American Waterworks are two that I'm really going to focus on trying to get to 100 shares or more while they're down a little bit, especially American Waterworks. Feel like it's pulling or see that it has pulled back a little bit uh, more down to the 117, 118 range. So looking forward to building these out. 10 more shares, ticker CMCSA. That's out of the communications sector. These are my weekly buys. Two ETFs, right? We've got the dividend growth ETF from Schwab, ticker SHSCHD. You know, everyone probably that is a dividend investor is aware of this one. Nice, it, very similar to like a VYM, uh, dividend growth ETF. That's what it is. Uh, I have this one in my kids' custodial accounts as well. So I'm adding one share of this a week regardless of what the market price is. I'm just going to add one share. And if this pulls back, you know, I was getting it in my daughter's account last year in the high 60s. I think I was buying a bunch in 68, 69, 71, 72. I think their cost basis is around $73 per share. I really built them out of position last year. I should have probably started buying it for myself then, but I was uh, focused on some individual positions. So we're into it now in this portfolio and we're going to add at least one share. But if it does pull back, you know, was a drop down in the mid 70s, even lower, I would probably uh, add two or more shares a week here. Same thing with Vanguard Total Stock Market. This is every stock in the United States stock market, ticker VTI. So it's a total stock market ETF, not quite the dividend growth as the Schwab ETF, but it does pay a small dividend. We picked up that one share at $253.63. And same thing, if the overall market was to pull back and we're at record highs, right? We're hitting record highs almost every week now. Uh, it looks like, uh, some tech is starting to cool off. If the NVIDIA's, Tesla's really pulled back, at and is starting to pull back. If a lot of these bigger companies pull back, this may drop a little bit. I'm expecting that we'll probably see a bit of a rotation from tech into some of the small cap st stuff. So if this pulls back or SCHD pulls back, I'll probably go more one or two, three, four shares a, a week uh, while it's pulled back. But for now, we're just going to add one share of each every week again, regardless of what the market price is. These new shares added $24.35 more in passive income. Total invested $1,935.67, added $54.21. That's including not just the new buys, but that's including the dividends added as, that paid out and uh, bought more shares as well. Now a quick run through the sector weights. Uh, communication sitting at 9.07% of the portfolio. Consumer discretionary 4.83%. I am really watching right now in this particular slice in the consumer discretionary sector right now, I am really watching uh, Starbucks. My wife, I, I am not a Starbucks uh, vis visitor. My wife is pretty much uh, the one who does a lot of Starbucks purchases in our house. My daughters like them as well. Uh, they have some, uh, what are they, cake pops, I think they call them. They like those. My wife likes their teas. I do, I do like their teas on occasion. I'm just not an everyday buyer of Starbucks. But if Starbucks was to drop back into the low 80s, you know, 84 or lower, I would probably look to open a position there. I know it's in the 90s and a lot of people are buying it right now, but I'm looking for a bit more of a pullback. Uh, but that is one I'm watching in this sector right here. Consumer Staples sits at 11.55% of the portfolio. This is another one that I'm thinking about making some changes in the portfolio. Not only mine, but my daughter's custodial accounts. We, all three of us, hold uh, Kraft Heinz. I am not happy with the... Kraft Heinz has not increased their dividend over the last several years. And I bought it knowing that they weren't increasing their dividend. But I kind of was hoping they would start uh, back with increases. Uh, and and I not only are they not increasing the dividend, but I'm not seeing growth in the stock price now. They've pulled back significantly. So it is one that I'm thinking about swapping out for General Mills. And I was looking at General Mills at the end of the week. It ran up, uh, I think, in a $66 range. So uh, if it continues to run up, maybe I don't do that. I look for another opportunity. But there is the potential that I might make some changes in this little slice of the pie right here. Energy sitting at 6.25% of the portfolio. Financials at 8.12. Uh, healthcare makes up the biggest chunk of the pie, 16.14% of the portfolio. I have a big position in Johnson & Johnson, though it is back in the high 150s. I might nibble on that a little bit. Uh, another one that I like in this sector right now, uh, well, there's several in this sector right now that look pretty interesting. Uh, Pfizer is one that I'm going to nibble, continue to nibble on. It's got a very nice dividend yield right now, over six, just over 6%. Um, Bristol-Myers Squibbs look good in this one. Gilead looks good. There's a lot. Medtronic uh, still looks decent. 
a uh, lot of interesting stocks in this particular slice of the pie right now that have pulled back while tech has really run up. Uh, so might be worth looking at some healthcare stocks out there if you're interested in them. They seem to be presenting some good value right now. Industrial sitting at 7.49%. I'd like another Canadian uh, railroad to pair with Union Pacific. There's CP uh, out there that I really like. If it pulls back, I might add it to the industrial sector here. Technology sitting at 7.39%. If Cisco remains down, I'll continue to nibble on that there. Uh, if Apple was to continue to pull back or Microsoft was to really pull back, I would add either one of those. Material sitting at 11.57. Uh, we talked about Valet. Again, might be adding a little bit here. If Valet continues to pull back, might be even nibbling a little bit of some baby still water while it's pulled back. Utilities sitting at 4.71%. We are going to build out that American Water Works uh, American water uh, position over the next month at least try to get that to 100 shares there so long as it stays under 121 I think is where I've got it pegged at um, utilities I'm sorry that we do utilities what we just covered and REITs 11.23 percent that realty income is the one that I'm really focused on in this sector we're going to really try to build that out and bring our cost basis down and last but certainly not least the ETFs now are sitting at 1.64 percent so still just a small sliver of the overall portfolio the majority of the portfolio is individual stocks but we're going to continue to build out that SCHD and VTI positions uh, into the future over here on the right Portfolio sector weight, same thing, percentages here on the left-hand column, and then the amount allocated to each uh, sector as well, right? How it's broken to, of the $222,281.94 of the entire portfolio, how it is broken out into each sector. Now, what a lot of you like to see from week to week, and I'm going to show this, whether I'm up, whether I'm down, whether I'm float, floating sideways, I'm going to show this every week so you can see a real portfolio built out over time. Again, I am not a financial guru. I did not go to college. I don't work on Wall Street. My parents are not wealthy, uh, did, never were in investing, still are not in investing, uh, yeah, even though I try to talk my dad into it now that he's retired and has a little bit of steady income to put into some stocks, but he just... He is anti-market for whatever reason. Uh, I, I don't know why. He's just really conservative and likes to keep his money in a bank. So it is what it is. Now he's getting a little better uh, return on his uh, savings account, but for a lot of years he was not. So it, it is what it is. But I want folks out there who maybe do not have a background in finance or who are thinking about starting a portfolio, be able to see a real portfolio built out over time, the ups and downs that come with it, and hopefully... It'll give some of you the courage uh, to, uh, to make your own investing journey, to start your own investing journey. Because in my mind, that is the only way for any of us to get out of the rat race, rat race right? To get out of our nine to five jobs, uh, five, six, seven days a week, some of us, uh, and to get to financial freedom and be able to retire and enjoy life and, and do what we want with our time. That's the idea behind this. So you can see here is the ticker. These are all the individual positions in the portfolio. How many total shares I currently hold? The current price as of the close of business on Friday, market value here, the average share price, my, that, my average share price, right? Uh, cost, my purchase price, how much I have into each position. Total return, whether I'm up or down, I'm going to show it here, right? The red, you can see those are the ones I'm down in. Percent return here, same thing. The red means I'm down. Green, the darker green means I'm up. You know, some of these, like Alley, really great return on that so far, 47%. Uh, Owens Corning here, 73.68. I actually should have probably added to this. This dropped back and I was only up 30% here a couple weeks ago. I probably should have added a little bit more to this while it pulled back, but it is what it is. Uh, Union Pacific here, same thing. I'd love for this to pull back a little bit so I can add some more here, but I'm up 24% there. But then you see others where I'm down, right? I'm, let's see here. The biggest one I'm down right here, 44% MPW, down $3,700, right? My cost base is $7.96, almost $8.00. It's currently only worth $4.42 per share. So not all of your picks are going to be winners. Eventually, I'm hoping the MPW turns around. For now, I'm just going to collect the dividend. I really have not been adding. I think I nibbled on it a little bit here a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago, whenever it was down in the $3 range. So a lot of these where I see red, you know, like Cisco down 1.4%. I, I see value there. It's under my cost basis. If I liked it at $49.63, why wouldn't I like it at $48.93 or $47 or $46? I'll continue to build that out. 
Uh, Enbridge, same thing. I'll probably add a little bit here to this this one here, maybe in the next coming weeks. J Johnson & Johnson, below my cost basis. That would be a buying opportunity. Kraft Heinz, that's the one I'm talking about, potentially swapping out for General Mills. So that one might be one that I just, you know, take the loss on $416 down, and it's almost $6,400. Hundred dollars is what it's currently worth. I think currently General Mills is at 66, so I wouldn't quite get to 100 shares, but I could throw in a couple more hundred more hundred more dollars to it and get it to 100 shares with with these funds here. But let's continue here. What sector each position falls in? Whether it's a quarterly, monthly, a semi-annual payer. Now I know that Baba is not a semi-annual payer, but I plugged it in there. They only pay once uh, once a year right now. I'm hoping that they increase that pay out to at least twice a year, if not quarterly. We'll see what they do. They just started paying dividends this year. Uh, so expecting dividends again next January. So I've got them in the semi-annual payer, hoping that like that, like I said, they change this to maybe twice a year or even quarterly. And if they do, I'll move them around. What I had to do there was I had to adjust uh, the mathematical equation and, and make it just a multiplier by one instead of by two or by four here or by 12, <laughs> like, uh, like realty income. Uh, current yield as of the close of business on Friday, my yield on cost, the portfolio weighting. So on the previous slide, what we saw was the sector weightings. So this is each individual positions weighting. Now on that, I do not like any one position to be more than 10% of the portfolio or any one sector to be more than 20% of the portfolio. So that is a rule that I've set for myself. And if you do have a portfolio and you're not just an ETF investor, you should have an idea of what do you want your weightings to be, right? So that you can kind of, as these positions, like I'll give you an example, Johnson & Johnson, it's pulled back a little bit. So it's only 7.85% of this, but let's say this went on a run, you know, and it, it, it ran up to, $180 per share or $190 per share, or, or if it ran up to $200 per share, that'd be great. You want to kind of make sure you're allocating the positions in your portfolio or the sectors in your positions in your portfolio uh, and keeping them even. So if I had to trim, you know, Johnson & Johnson because it ran way up and was over 10% of my portfolio, I would do that. And that's the idea of setting a limit on what you want each position or what you want each sector uh, to be at so that you know, hey, I'm out of balance here with my portfolio. This position shouldn't be more than 5%, 10%, 15%, whatever it is. And maybe you have, you know, really high percentages on a position that you really like. Maybe you really like Microsoft. So you're willing to make that 40% of your portfolio. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you set, you know, some limits that you understand are for your portfolio and then you maintain your portfolio within those limits. Estimated annual income in this position or in this column here payout months in this column, dividend growth year over year, right, uh, here, and where it sits at 15% of the 52-week low. So let's talk about this for a little bit. I use this as a, well, we can use BABA for a uh, reference here. So we're building this out. We're just at 102 shares here. My cost basis is $73.49, so just a little bit lower than my cost basis. But I was buying this. I actually should have waited to buy this one to the end of the week. We never know what it's going to be from day to day, so I just bought it. My, I bought it at $75, so I bought it above my cost basis, but under where I wanted it 15% of its 52-week low. And when I have 15% of its 52-week low, it's not necessarily the, the price I'm paying per share. It's this column right here. I want the average share price to be under 15% of its 52-week low. So I'm willing to buy it even over $76.62, so long as this stays under that number. You know, if I wanted to add five more shares next week and it was at $77 per share, so long as it didn't jump this up over $76.62, I would probably just buy those five more shares. Now, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably going to back off and maybe buy two or four shares a week here for a little bit while it remains down here in the $73, $74, $75 range. Uh, but that's kind of what I use that for. And it's not a hard and fast rule, right? If I really like a position and it's slightly over, well, I'll buy it. It's, you know, it just gives me a, again, same thing with the percentage weights. It gives me kind of a reference of where I want to set my prices. Uh, in this case, it's percentages. In this case, it's prices. So currently, total shares, $6,158.209 6 shares. Market value of the portfolio, $222,281.94. So in the next couple weeks, should bust over a $225,000 portfolio. That'd be nice to see. 
my purchase price, how much I have into the portfolio, currently $214,497.72. I am up $7,784.21, up 3.63%. I'm not really focused on this. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you've seen me down, you know, four or five, six percent, seven, eight percent even. Uh, sometimes that's fine. The, the market's going to go up and down. Your portfolio is going to go up and down. It's what it does over the long term. And when I'm talking long term, I'm not talking six months or even a year or even five years. I'm talking 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, right? I'm 44 years old and I plan on having this portfolio for the rest of my life, uh, right? So, and then eventually passing it, passing it on to either my kids or my kids' kids. Uh, that's what the idea of this portfolio is. Not just only for me, it's for my heirs, for the people who are going to be around after I'm long and gone. Uh, current dividend yield 4.42%. Current yield on cost 4.585%. And this, this is what I'm focused on. The estimated annual income, the dividends paid out by all the positions in the portfolio. It goes up every week, whether I add more you know, funds to it, whether positions in the portfolio pay out dividends and they buy more shares or whether I just sit back and don't do anything. Uh, and it currently sits at $9,834.74. So I am very close to jumping up over, you know, the five. So right now it's it's four uh, in, the, in the four figure club, right? Uh, you'll hear people say six figures. That means they make $100,000 or more. Right now I'm in the four figure club. And once we jump over 10,000, it will be in the five figure club. And I think we're gonna hit the five figure club in dividends by the end of the month or very close to it. Current dividend growth sitting at 4.76%. Now I've played with this a little bit. Part of the reason, let's go to Kraft Heinz. We talked about that a little bit here a minute ago. Part of the reason for taking this position out, if I do end up doing it, it doesn't have any dividend growth. It hasn't had any dividend growth since I bought it for the last three years now. Uh, I knew that going in, but I was hopeful that they would start increasing the dividend growth again once they started getting their footing. They just have not done that. Uh, and I'm not, I can deal with, if they had dividend growth, I could deal with being down a little bit. I would actually look at it, excuse me, I would look at it as a buying opportunity and probably add more. But with no dividend growth, even with the 4.6% dividend yield currently, I have not been adding to this just because I'm disappointed they haven't started increasing their dividend growth again. And if I was to swap this out with uh, General Mills, General Mills currently has about 9% dividend growth. So that would increase my overall dividend growth as well. So I'm really considering that. Let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. Uh, like to get your, your input. Do you think I should swap out Kraft Heinz? I love the position. I mean, there's a lot of Kraft Heinz products in my cupboards and in my refrigerator. So, I mean, it's one every time I buy something from the grocery store that's a Kraft Heinz product, you know, I'm supporting my own shares. So I love that fact, but I also own some products or buy some products from General Mills as well. So that's why I'm thinking about swapping it out. And I just like their dividend growth better. Their metrics are a little better. Uh, their growth is a little better. Revenue growth is a little better. So uh, it might be one, again, that I'm, I'm really seriously considering. And, and I know that I'm talking about it a little bit much and have been for a couple weeks, but I, I really take time and think through selling or swapping a position in the portfolio. It's not something I do lightly. I'm not buying and selling into different companies all the time. I will add companies and then hold them for quite a while. And that's the idea. I want to buy companies and hold them for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years uh, and not have to buy in and out of them uh, companies. Uh, and, and some of you, if you don't like to buy individual companies, you know, ETFs might be the better way to go. Maybe a VTI or a VOO, VU, the S&P 500 or SCHD or VYM uh, or VUG uh, are better ones for you. Maybe that's a better way to go. For me, I like, I like to play with the individual companies. It gives me something to research. It also helps fill out some of these videos. Uh, and then I also added in some ETFs so you can see those built out over time as well. So that is the quick portfolio update. Uh, let me know what you think down, down below. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done this already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, hit the subscribe button. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences, stocks we may be buying, stocks we may be avoiding, how we're doing overall as investors, encouragement that we can give one another along the way. Uh, I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. Uh, so if you have a, I do have one that I'm probably going to do this weekend. I haven't entered into my options yet. 
I did get a viewer who asked about how I do options or could I do a video on options. So I am working on that this uh, weekend, probably tomorrow, whenever I run my options plays for the for Monday morning, uh, because I usually enter my options in on Sundays or Saturdays. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a I'll snip out how I buy those. I'll open up the my brokerage. I'll open up my Ally account. I'll go in and I'll clip through how I'm buying each individual uh, options play, and I'll probably just use one of them as a template for a video that I might put out next uh, next Friday or or Saturday. Uh, so yeah, I saw your I saw your recommendation. It is on my list. I will try to get to that here over the next week or so. Uh, so this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great week. Hey, hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in the presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion. And invest in your for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves for risk. Can lose money. You should never invest any amount not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria, or seek the advice counsel certified financial advisor.